Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Natasha, welcome to my channel. This video is all about how to create your own flower wall. I'm gonna quickly go over the products that you'll need to build it and some other helpful resources in the description box and then I'll show you how I did it. The first thing I would recommend getting is plant twist tie. This is 200 feet worth of twist tie and this is like $6 at Lowe's. I also recommend getting a pair of wire cutters because when you buy your fake flowers, you're gonna need to snip them off of the handle. And you don't wanna use regular scissors for that because it can ruin your scissors. So I would recommend getting an actual pair of wire cutters. These I think I got for like $10 at Lowe's, but you can get them for even cheaper. Obviously you wanna get fake flowers. I definitely recommend checking out the Dollar Tree first. Sometimes you can buy them in bulk online and get like giant bushels of them. Like a bushel of flowers costs one dollar, so you get like five to seven different flowers for one dollar, which is a really great deal, especially compared to some other pricier stores out there. I got mine from a variety of different places, but it really just depends on the type of flower you want, the colors you want, etc. That's going to be really different depending on what you're going for. I chose roses, and I really only went with three different colors. I have four different flower types but they kind of stay within the same tone. I have a lot of creams, light pinks, and burgundies, and then some greenery from the leaves. And let me show you the back of this really quick to show you what type of panel you want. If you can see, this is a wire grid, and the smaller the squares you can get, the better. I would have preferred to have one inch diameters, but this is three by three inch diameters. I actually reused a wall decoration that I already had, uh, I got it from Amazon years ago. I don't know if it's still available, but I would definitely recommend checking out a website called Econico. I believe that's how you say it. They have all different types of sizes. You can buy multiples of them, and you can also buy little connectors. That way, if you're trying to create like a big backdrop, say of three panels of two by five feet, you can connect them with little 85 cent connectors. That means you can break them apart, put them in your car, make them portable, or you can put several pieces together and create like a giant backdrop for photo shoots and stuff. Originally, I was gonna create a very large one. In fact, these are the colors for my wedding coming up next year. I was gonna create a giant one so I could use them for engagement photo shoots and maybe put it behind our table whenever we're eating at the reception but I already put so much time and effort into making this small panel that I decided this is enough for me, I'll just use it as wall decoration and for backgrounds for photos and stuff, but you can go way bigger if you want, it just depends on how much work and money you're willing to put into it. So without further ado, let me show you how I put this together. So the way I'm going to finish the rest of my panel is I'm going to do the top row and then I'm gonna do the side a little bit and then fill in from there. I have four different roses and I tried to keep them all within the same tone with the pop of color with the burgundy. And I'm not gonna have an exact pattern that I'm following, but I'm just trying to keep it random with like little bits of burgundy poking out everywhere. So to finish the rest of this top line, the next one I'm gonna do is this smaller pink rose. I'm going to put the stem in the first box and then pull it around the second loop and then push it into the third one if it can fit. And I'm just going to keep doing that with each of them and making sure that I try to keep the line as straight as possible, but it's a little bit tougher with flowers. So I'm going to put this little pink one in the first box, pull it out through the second loop. The stem is not quite long enough to go into the third square, so I'm just going to put it in place and then go for the next one, which I think will be one of the burgundy ones. So I'm going to take the red, put it in the first box, pull it through the second one and kind of just weave it through. Some of the petals are going to be squished, but that's okay. Once it's all together, it'll make more sense. Now I'm going to add some flowers on the side part here, but instead of putting the stems in vertically, I'm going to weave them in horizontally. And that'll also help keep these top flowers in place as well. Okay, now I'm going to do pretty much the same thing, but just a little bit lower. 
And this is where you can kind of bend down the top of the roses to make them kind of go out a little bit instead of pointing straight up. And don't worry about having a ton of gaps right now. More, it's more important to get the roses in the grid and then when you tether them together with your twist ties, that's where you can kind of make sure that they're all tightly snug. And then wherever you have gaps, you can add leaves and other smaller flowers and stuff later. right here feel a little bit loose so I am going to use a twist tie to gather those together just so that they don't move around so easily and I worry that as I put more flowers on they're just going to move around even more. If you can see, I'm running out of white and the darker pink roses, so I'm going to snip some more and then come back. And something to keep in mind with sunflowers is, you can see there are some leaves on there, and you can take those off if you don't want them, but I kind of like having some little bits of green popping out. So what I do is I just push them up to the top, and that way the rose has some green around it, and then you have the stem that can easily weave in and out of the grid pattern. But you can also just take them off. Some of them you have to cut off, and some of them you can just slide off. Okay, and now I'm going to try and fill in this middle part. It's going to be a little bit harder because they won't have as much room to move around, but I did twist tie these flowers down so that they don't move around as much while I'm trying to maneuver around them. And this is why I like to have it standing up so that I can put my arm behind the grid and pull the stems through as I try to weave. See, there is a tiny little hole right there so what I'm gonna do is grab this leafy piece here and if you can see it's like two sides of leaf with a little thing in the middle I'm gonna take that middle part and wrap it around one of the grid lines in the back and then I'm gonna push the leaves through and then tie it down and then from the back you can kind of bend some of the flowers to help fill in that gap a little bit. See this flower, I want it to be more down but it keeps pushing up. So I'm going to twist tie that one down so that it stays in place. Okay, so now that I have all the flowers in place for the most part, I'm going to go through with twist ties and make sure everything is secured. That was my video. Please let me know if you have any more suggestions. If you've made flower walls in the past and you have any extra tips that you'd like to share, please do so in the comments. And of course, if you have an Instagram and you end up making your own flower wall, please be sure to send the picture or tag me in it so that I can see it, so I can see all of your creations as well. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys!